now at 5.30, the results from the Iowa Democratic Caucus are the closest in the state's history, and a long election still lies ahead. The Lexington Fire Department is asking for your help in figuring out how that massive fire started at the Bluegrass Stockyards. And a bill that would change Kentucky's informed consent law for abortions is passed in the state Senate. Now moves on to the desk of Governor Matt Bevin. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It's nice to have you with us. Tuesday morning, February 2nd. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Perhaps you're going to... You know, consider your wardrobe when you get dressed today because it's going to get pretty warm. Uh, really? I mean, up to close to 70 degrees yeah. or so uh, for our daytime high. And then when that happens in the middle of winter, something has to give, right? So let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris, who's keeping his eye on things on this first alert severe weather day. Yeah, the way we're going to do that is with this wind advisory. I mean, 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts, that's without the thunderstorms. The thunderstorms actually come during the evening and night. Uh, it's starting off in the evening well into the west and then into the night for most of us. So throughout the day, you're talking about a mixture of sun and clouds. You're talking about 30, 40 mile per hour winds out of the south and southwest. And that's going to pump our temperatures up very rapidly. We are seeing Danville and Richmond the, just the past hour jump two degrees. So that warm front's extending northbound. Lexington, we're next in line. 38 is basically where we're going to finish off for an overnight low when you look back on it a year from now. Because it actually gets warmer, but still the sun's not rising until about 745. So that warm front moves northbound. That'll bring us some big time, big time warm air. By the afternoon, we're talking right around 70 degrees. But then those nice storms kick in. 30 and 40 miles per hour, that's going to be extreme, extremely low compared to what we could be seeing out of some of these damaging winds. I'm going to talk about the miles per hour with those and also possible flooding in that, all the threats. I'll have that coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, see you then. We have a lot going on this morning. The 2016 presidential race now turns to New Hampshire. This is just a day after the Iowa caucuses. As Marley Hall reports from Des Moines, while the Republicans have a clear winner, Iowa Democrats have not declared a winner at this moment. They say the race is still too close to call. The Democratic contest in Iowa remains unresolved this morning, with Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders still locked in a draw. Both candidates addressed their supporters late last night, as the numbers were still being counted. I will keep standing up for you. I will keep fighting for you. We are going to create an economy that works for working families, not just the billionaire class. The virtual tie means both candidates will likely leave Iowa with roughly the same number of delegates. But pundits say the results don't bode well for Sanders. This was a must win night for Bernie, and a tie is probably not going to cut it. Um, you know, he didn't turn out the quote unquote Obama coalition as he would have hoped for. Republican turnout here in Iowa shattered records as voters handed victory to Ted Cruz over Donald Trump. Tonight is a victory for courageous conservatives across Iowa. We finished second, and I want to tell you something. I'm just honored. I'm really honored. All eyes are now on Marco Rubio, who pulled away with a third place finish last night, only trailing Trump by 1%. The big target is on Marco Rubio's back. It's not only going to be Cruz and Trump going after Rubio, but it's going to be these guys, Bush and, uh, and, and uh, Christie and Kasich. The focus of the 2016 presidential campaign now shifts to New Hampshire, which holds the first in the nation primary next week. Marley Hall, CBS News, Des Moines, Iowa. And the Iowa caucuses also mean the end for two candidates in the race. Mike Huckabee and Martin O'Malley both suspended their presidential bids last night. A federal grand jury has subpoenaed records for Kentucky Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes' last two campaigns. Grimes' attorney says she is not the target of the investigation. The grand jury subpoena relates to finances of Grimes' 2014 U.S. Senate campaign and her 2015 Secretary of State campaign. The grand jury also subpoenaed records of her father, Jerry Lundergan, and two of his companies. Lexington firefighters say there are no indications that the fire that destroyed the bluegrass stockyards on Saturday was set on purpose. But while investigators continue to search the site of where the historic building once stood, fire crews are now asking for the public's help. WKYT's Mark Barber is joining us with more. Good morning, Rebecca. And they're asking for the public's help this morning because it's been more than 60 hours since the massive fire destroyed the bluegrass stockyards and they still do not know where the fire started. So this morning they are asking anyone who may have video or pictures of this large fire before fire crews got here to send them to their arson tip line. 
Now, investigators are stressing that at this time they do not think this fire was started on purpose. However, again, they are asking you to send those pictures or video to their arson tip line. They're hoping that that tip from the public will help them figure out where the fire started, and from there, they can determine how it started. The governor and the agriculture commissioner visited the stockyards yesterday to take a close look at the damage. The commissioner said his father worked here when he was growing up, so the loss of the stockyards is deeply personal for him. Saturday's devastating three alarm fire also destroyed five other businesses. It took more than 120 firefighters to keep it spreading any farther. In all, the fire destroyed 10 acres of property, making this the worst fire the city has seen in more than 30 years. Firefighters want to move forward with their investigation, but they say they are needing your help at this point. Again, if you have any pictures or videos of this fire before any crews got here on Saturday, you're asked to email them to that address that you see there on the bottom of your screen. Arson tips at lexingtonky.gov. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right. Well, a bill that would change Kentucky's informed consent law for abortions has been sent to the governor's desk for approval. If it is passed into law with his signature, it would require a face-to-face -face meeting or real-time video consultation with a doctor before an abortion. WKYT's Mike Byer is joining us now from our live desk with a closer look at that. Mike? Kentucky lawmakers have approved a bill allowing real-time video consultations between doctors and women as an option to fulfill informed consent requirements before getting an abortion. By a 33-5 to 5 vote, the Kentucky Senate gave final approval Monday afternoon to Senate Bill 4, which amends Kentucky's informed consent law. The bill now goes to the desk of Governor Matt Devin. For years, Kentucky law has required women to meet with a doctor before having an abortion, but supporters of the bill say some doctors have circumvented that requirement by having patients listen to a recorded message on the phone with no interaction. The Senate initially voted to require patients to meet with doctors in person at least 24 hours before an abortion. The House amended the bill to allow real-time video consultations called visual telehealth services in the amended wording as an option to fulfill informed consent requirements. Now, a spokesperson for the governor recently told our news partner, the Lexington Herald Leader, that Governor Bevin is expected to sign the bill. At the live desk, Mike Byer, WKYT. Well, a newly released report says Kentucky coal production has fallen to its lowest level in more than 60 years. The report from the Kentucky Energy and Environment Cabinet says production fell to 61 million tons last year, a 21 percent drop compared to 2014. Coal production hasn't been this low since 1954. Experts blame oversupply, competition from natural gas, and tougher environmental regulations for the decline. If you need to look at your 2015 vehicle property taxes before filing your income taxes, you can now do that online. The Kentucky Division of Motor Vehicle Licensing is now putting vehicle property tax information on its website, and all you have to do is enter your vehicle identification number. The site does not show personal information, just the vehicle tax amount that you paid. We have a link to that site at WKYT.com. Well, a portion of New Circle Road is back open this morning after a man was badly injured after being hit by a car. The crash happened around 7.30 last night on New Circle Road near Russell Cave. Police say the man was, wearing, or was crossing New Circle illegally when the car hit him. At last check, that man was in critical but stable condition at the hospital. Investigators say he had severe injuries to the legs and a head wound. Police shut down part of the roadway while their collision reconstruction unit investigated. All lanes have reopened. We're continuing to track an ongoing death investigation at a Central Kentucky Livestock Center. Around 3 o'clock yesterday, state police say they received a report about a possible shooting at the Washington County Livestock Center in Springfield. Police have not released many details about the investigation, but they say they found a man injured there who later died at a Louisville hospital. Continue to check WKYT.com for further updates on that investigation. A Harlan County man is in custody after police found his dog with a serious injury. 39-year-old Ryan Harris was charged with animal torture Saturday. Police say they received a tip that his dog had a serious injury and found his dog with a badly infected leg. Police aren't sure how this happened, but they did charge Harris because they say he didn't get help for his pet. The dog now with a vet, but investigators think its leg may have to be removed. A Spencer County teenager is said to be lucky to be alive thanks to a Central Kentucky police officer. While on his way home from work, Shelbyville officer Toby Lewis says he noticed something in a creek off Shelbyville Road in Spencer County. He pulled over and he noticed a car on its side in a creek. 
Officer Lewis called 911 and then walked down to the car. And the sunroof is open about an inch. And I start hearing screaming, help me. And then I see bloody fingers come up to the sunroof. They say 17-year-old Taylor Wilson was in the wrecked car. They say emergency crews had to use the jaws of life to free her. And Taylor had a head injury and broken ribs, but police say she is expected to recover. Officer Lewis says he normally doesn't take that particular road home, but for some reason, he decided to that night. Good thing he did, sounds yeah. like. Time to check live drive traffic this morning at 541 in just a few seconds. Let's see what's going on out there. Lots of green on our map. You're good to go this morning. Anticipating those uh, warm daytime highs today. Lots of wind uh, that will be setting in even ahead of the front tonight. So everybody sort of uh, keep that uh, in your yeah. back of your mind, especially in those uh, higher profile vehicles. All right, there's still a whole lot more to come this morning, including this story. It's the biggest game of the year for players. But the Super Bowl is also one of the biggest platforms for advertisers. Coming up, a preview of one ad that is sure to get some laughs. That's ahead this morning. Then we're going to be looking at that severe weather threat later on tonight off into the overnight hours. Here comes a big system heading our way. I'm going to go over hour-by-hour -hour forecast and break the timing now for you. Coming up next. Clouds overhead, but nothing falling out of those clouds. What we're going to be expecting later on into the evening and night, that's when you can expect those storms. So throughout your day, it's going to be pretty calm, pretty quiet. I want to show you back toward the west because that's where our system is located. Look, this system is far away. I mean, it's going to take some time to actually make its way toward our region. So expect it in about 12 to 18 hours as opposed to 6 to 12 hours. So we have a long ways to go. But this warm front really nudging in that warmer air into the region at this very moment. We're in the 40s southbound, 30 central and northern zones, but the 40s will actually take over before the sun even rises. So we'll start to see those temperatures rise very rapidly as we go throughout the morning hours with that warm front and those winds really cranking up, especially during the afternoon, 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts. That's with a mixture of sun and clouds. That is not with thunderstorms. Thunderstorms are going to be 60 plus later on this evening and off into the night. Dry, very mild. Teachers, heads up. This is a good day to get the kids outside. Just know, climbing on those uh, jungle gyms out of the playground. 34 mile, mile per hour wind gusts could cause a few issues, but uh, other than that, we're staying dry throughout the day and very mild, near 70 degrees once we finish it off into the afternoon. Now let's go off into the night. The main time frame for this severe weather threat is going to be 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. That's a broad view, right? Damaging winds being the main threat. Well, let me break it down for you a little bit better. Zone by zone, okay? We go over toward the 65 corridor. This is when you start to see these storms move on in. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., I-65, that would be Fort Knox. That's going to be E-Town. That's going to go down to Cape City. Even include po portions of Nelson County, uh, Bardstown region. I would say more toward the 8 to 9 p.m. Then you get into, say, Lexington, the 75 corridor, BG Parkway, Frankfort, Georgetown, Cynthiana, go up 68, 62, and also uh, work your way back toward Moorhead. Moorhead would be more like midnight. So, you know, Frankfurt, it's more like 9, 10 p.m. In Lexington, Richmond, I would put it right around anywhere from 10 p.m. to about midnight. That's probably your best bet. Down towards Somerset, that goes for you guys as well. And you can see over toward the east, southeast, it's mainly after midnight that we actually see these storms move on in. Eastern zones, you have the better opportunity of not seeing severe weather. You have an isolated chance. I would say flooding and uh, the isolated chance that a couple of damaging winds will be your main threat. But it really, it's I-75 west, back toward 65, back toward Louisville, back toward Bowling Green. That's your best bet at actually seeing severe storms later on tonight into tomorrow morning. They should fade around 7 to 8 a.m. in the far east and southeastern portions of Kentucky. Once that passes through, then you're dropping those temperatures to the 30s. Then 40s for the weekend. The weekend actually looks pretty good, especially with Super Bowl coming up. Yeah. So uh, a lot going on the next 24 to about 36 hours. But after that, it's very calm. 70 degrees. You need to see some people with shorts on. Yeah. Oh, I think so. It actually it was like Sunday. You remember yep. past Sunday? Yep. Yep. It felt great. Yeah. I actually put on a short sleeve shirt and shorts and walked outside. A lot so, of people did. Yeah, yeah. It'll be a nice day until we hit the evening and night. All right, Micah. Thank you. We'll keep watch on that. And with Super Bowl 50 now just days away, advertisers are digging deep to come up with some winning ads. This is Heinz Super Bowl ad. In it, a group of wiener dogs shown running across a field. <laughs> 
uh, to reach a family of Heinz condiments. This while Harry Nilsson's Without You plays in the background. The spot is now part of a new Heinz campaign called Meet the Ketchups. The commercial is the work of the ad agency David out of Miami. A 30-second version of the ad can be seen Sunday during the big game. Thank All right. You. So they uh, build anticipation <laughs> ahead of uh, those, those cute commercials little dogs. That coming up. All right. Good to have you along on WKYT this morning. Coming up, you'll get the stories making news right now. We'll also be checking traffic again, see how things are moving along, what's hot on the web and social media, and more on WKYT here on your Tuesday morning. Good morning. The time 5:51 on WKYT this morning. It's your Tuesday. Let's take a look right now at some of the stories we're working on for you at this hour. Lexington firefighters say they don't have any reason to believe that Saturday's fire at the Bluegrass Stockyards was set on purpose. Firefighters say though anyone who has any pictures or videos of the fire before the first fire trucks got there at the stockyards should send those in. We have information on how you can do that at wkyt.com. The CDC is adding more tropical destinations including Costa Rica and Nicaragua to a list of countries pregnant women should avoid. The development comes as officials with the World Health Organization declared the Zika virus an international emergency Monday. The virus has been linked to a rare birth defect in thousands of babies, mostly in South America. Back in the states, the focus of the 2016 presidential campaign now shifts to New Hampshire following last night's Iowa caucuses. Iowa voters handed a huge victory to Ted Cruz over Republican frontrunner Donald Trump. Votes are still being counted in the neck and neck race between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. Although CBS News now reporting that the Clinton campaign is claiming victory in Iowa. Super Bowl 50 mania continues to take over the country. Events officially kicked off Monday. Players from the Carolina Panthers and the Denver Broncos met the media for the first time. The two teams face off for the big game this Sunday in San Francisco. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. Women who have high blood pressure late in pregnancy are significantly more likely to give birth to underweight or stillborn babies. The study is in the American Heart Association's journal Hypertension. Researchers say women who experience the biggest rise in their blood pressure are more than twice as likely to deliver a small baby. Young adults who get easily stressed are at greater risk of developing high blood pressure later in life. Researchers in Sweden also found men who had a low tolerance for stress and who were overweight were three times more likely to develop high blood pressure. A new study finds radiation after surgery improves survival for women with ductal carcinoma in situ. Uh, researchers in Boston looked at thousands of women who have the non-invasive form of breast cancer. They found women who had a higher chance of recurrence based on their age and tumor size lowered their risk of dying by nearly 70% if they had radiation in addition to surgery. Women with a low chance of recurrence did not see a benefit to radiation. 5.54 is the time. Let's get a check right now. Today's traffic trouble spots. Everything looking good out there. No issues. Time to check now in with Bill. And we have all the latest on WKYT.com. It is a WKYT first alert severe weather day ahead of potentially strong storms arriving tonight. Micah says that will follow today's high of somewhere around 70 degrees or so. So we'll be uh, keeping very close watch on that as uh, we go through the day. Uh, and uh, let's see if we can get the uh, WKYT website up there right now. Well, anyway, uh, we've mentioned Lexington firefighters asking for the public's help, giving them information or pictures from the scene of the Bluegrass Stockyards fire before engines got there. We have information on how you can do that at WKYT.com. Also trending this morning, restaurant owner Jeff Ruby took to Twitter to vent about the Centerpoint project in downtown Lexington. He said no city should have an unsightly eyesore like this displayed in the heart of its downtown for this long. Ruby then used the hashtag shameful. Check that uh, story as a developing as a deadline for the developers is approaching later this week. All right, John Calipari, Kentucky will be looking for a big win uh, in Knoxville tonight as the Cats will be taking on the Vols. Uh, Kentucky.com's Jerry Tipton looks ahead. Coach Cal says he needs a four guard rotation, so it could be an interesting game. And of course, we are updating all the storylines out of Iowa this morning. The Iowa caucuses, Ted Cruz uh, wins on the Republican side, a virtual tie on the Democratic side with Hillary Clinton's campaign just now declaring victory. The candidates uh, at this point uh, move on to New Hampshire.
two candidates leaving the race. CBS This Morning will have full reports and analysis coming up right here at 7, and we'll have local updates. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or Instagram, and for the latest news anytime, WKYT.com. Just a few clouds overhead, nothing really to worry about this morning. And we're going to be seeing that front get closer and closer to us as time moves along. This warm front really pushing in some much milder air into the forecast this morning. So we'll start to see these temperatures actually rise before the sun even comes above the horizon. Big system. It's far away. It's about 18 hours out before we actually see some of these storms roll on through. Damaging winds are going to be our main player. It's right around moderate. Remember, this is not an outbreak type of situation. However, we are looking at least the possibility of a few severe cells to roll on through as this line pushes through later on this evening off into the night. Tornadic activity very low. We just can't rule it out. That is the same for flooding too. Some models picking up on about an inch and a half to about two inches of rain for some portions. I'm going to break that down. I'm going to show you who can expect that, when you can expect it in your backyard. Coming up with another hour, WKYT News.